Everything has a season. Everything has a reason. Everything happens naturally in these like cycles of creative working and outflow. But we don't necessarily know what all that is all the time, do we? As the conscious mind, as the active mind, as the busy mind, there's a state of letting the mind become so still and relaxed that it can hear something beyond its own thoughts, beyond its own busyness and thoughts about everything, everything around. Like there's some other presence within us, which Yoranda names as the wonderful one within, that also communicates to us just as much as our mind's uh, monkey. I think they call it the monkey mind, the chatter and babble sometimes of just the undisciplined mind running away on itself, commentating on everything. <laughs> Oftentimes, in many different teachings and pathways, cultures, philosophies, religions, uh, the mind is used as a space to represent the garden as a metaphor, because it works really well. And in fact, it's actually probably more of um, the garden lives in the heart, and the mind, the conscious mind, is more like the gardener. It's like responsible for the caretaking of the garden and so the mind has some responsibility there right now if there is no gardener things still grow things are still going to grow without man to tend but with it we can shape it a certain way however things still have their own cycles still have things have their own time and place of how they come into manifestation, the creative cycles. And as a gardener, I suppose you could learn and through practice and learning information, you could come to know what those cycles are as a general principle. But in any moment, there is that space, that voice within each of us that already knows what cycle things are in already knows what's the most perfect thing right now. And if we can become still enough in the mind, we have a master gardener within us that can help turn the fields of our heart into beautiful know, patches of flowers <laughs> or amazing, abundant rows of vegetables. I have a little story. I've recently uh, started fasting. I'm doing a juice cleanse fast. I'm on day six. So for the past five days, just been drinking water and juice. I've been doing, doing good. Haven't broken. Last night, something happened. I don't know. I just, all of a sudden, I've got a craving for peanut butter. Just out of nowhere. And my mind starts thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I need some peanut butter. Maybe I need some protein. Maybe, you know, it would just be delicious. And so uh, my friend Bex is the one who decided to start doing the fast. And then I jumped in. It was like, I'm going to do it with you. Because I could feel that pull from inside. My body really wanted it. And so I reached out to her and sent a little text and got a cosign. Well, if your body needs that, yeah, listen to your body. I'm like, all right. Good. <laughs> Somebody agreed with me. So I go and I eat some peanut butter, like two spoonfuls. And it was delicious. But then I found out that that might not be the best thing while on the fast. This morning, I actually was having a little bit of a stomach ache. I ended up throwing up a couple times just because I introduced it into a way where that wasn't the right thing for this moment. It's, I don't know a lot about gardening. But if you've got certain soils and you go try to dump a bunch of nitrogen and give me a name, phosphorus into there, just because you think that's what it wants, that may not be the cycle that it's in. That may not be what it needs. So my self-active mind kind of just took me on a little journey there. This is what I want. I'm going to figure out how to get it. I'm going to make it okay. But 
the point is that in each one of us, in every moment, we have a source within that knows exactly what's perfect for our garden, knows exactly what's perfect for us in each and every moment. If we can get still enough to hear that voice, it will be there. 